Welcome back. We are uh, we are down to three. We uh, this is Bob Rignaris, Perry Marshall. Uh, we are going through ten predictions for the upcoming decade, and today we are at uh, something probably close to your heart, Perry. Of course, all these are close to your heart, but uh, this one is a breakthrough in disease, which actually excites me a lot. Based on I think everything that you've been studying for the past. 10 or 15 years in regards to evolution 2.0, which is a breakthrough in uh, the treatment of disease. I hated biology when I was in high school. And um, I have a friend who's, she's about 23, maybe. She read evolution 2.0 and she said, thank you for writing this book because this book, it, it brought the life back into biology. And she said, she articulated it better than I ever had. She said, the thing I hated about biology was it was all seen, always seemed to be about like dead frogs. Okay. <laughs> and it was always presented as such a sterile way. And you know what? I, I, th I think that literally is true. I think, I think the traditional biologists literally did kill biology in in the profession, this is called physics envy, and it's, it's, it's biologists being jealous that the precision of physics and its ability to predict things isn't true in biology. And I, and I think what, what the, the biologists did was they, they, they took a scissors and they cut out the thing that was special that they had, mm. and then they got jealous of what the other guys had. There's something very, very special and unique about biology, and we don't understand what it is. What is it? It's the fact that Bob Rignaris is having an experience inside his head, behind his eyeballs of this conversation, and so am I, and so, and so are you, dear viewer. Right. And nobody knows where that experience comes from, okay? And uh, we call it consciousness. But I, but I think consciousness uh, in some form, you know, in some way, shape, or form is present at every level of biology. And your cat is having a conscious experience, and so is your dog. And in some much smaller, more limited way, probably even so is, is the bacteria or the mold in your bathroom, okay? Um, because living things our beings. And um, a, a big part of the science profession has tried to like wall this off for a hundred years and it hasn't worked. Um, and, and the, like the, like ground zero of this is evolutionary theory. Um, and what most people don't know is that evolutionary theory is in a massive state of flux right now. You're not reading about it in the newspaper because the journalists haven't caught on to it yet, but in the science academy, it is in a complete state of change. Well, what most people also don't know is that most cancer research is based on 75 year old assumptions about evolution that are flat wrong. Mm -hmm. And I know a number of people who are deeply involved in cancer research um, and people who take alternative views to this. And what I see coming is a complete sea change in the way we address disease, the way that we address cancer, the way we address evolution, the way we address life itself. And it is, it is all coming to a head and it's being brought to light by the difference between biology and technology, which is what I was talking about when we talked about the singularity. And my observation about people who are age 15 to 30 is they are not married to the dogmas that the baby boomers are all married to. There is a saying in science, it's a very famous saying, that science precedes one funeral at a time. <laughs> and it's true. It's true. For science to move forward, somebody who was the king of an old view has to die. Wow. Well, the kings of the old views are dying. And 
science is going to change drastically. In fact, in fact, I, I, I'm even making it really two predictions for the price of one here. The other prediction is in the next 10 years, there is going to be a split in the science community between people think that's all dead physical laws and the people who accept that life has its own special secret sauce that we're trying to understand but don't. And they're just willing to accept it even though we don't know how to define it. And that group is going to propel light years faster than the old group did. And I, I think we are, we are right in the midst of a complete paradigm shift within science. And it's going to bring better cancer treatment, better disease treatments. In fact, there's a lot of big breakthroughs that are just around the corner. And the only thing slowing them down is government regulation. I, I think another huge, huge industry in the next 10 years is going to be medical tourism. And it's going to be people going to countries where procedures are legal that are not legal here. And mm -hmm. there will be people willing to take great risks. Like, okay, think stage four cancer patient. It's like, if you stay here, you will die. It right. doesn't matter whether you do chemo or not. All right, like your number's up. Go to Bangkok and try something crazy. It's at least, you know, a Hail Mary pass. You're going to see a lot of that, especially with baby boomers um, who are, you know, getting older now. Um, so actually, and they, that's have, really they, have the, they have the financial resources to do it as well. Yes, they do. So really, that's three predictions for the price of one. But, but, uh, this is absolutely underway. And I know so many people behind the scenes and none of them are famous. And most of them are frankly are redheaded stepchildren. They won't be redheaded stepchildren 10 years from now. They will, they will be solidly in control of the conversation. Well, I think this prediction does have a, a foundation based on the people in the scientific community you already are having dinner with and and meeting with on a regular basis um, who are part of well-established well-known universities university of chicago oxford university and so forth who are already influencing the departments at those institutions and that all flows downhill i believe um and i and i think uh, just that based on you know being somewhat involved with evolution 2.0 and understanding where you started where we are now is that this is another one that really, um, you know, this is kind of an easy prediction to make. And it's probably the most, the one that you hope is most optimistic because that's, this is really gonna, I mean, if this happens in the next 10 years, you know, humanity is going to leapfrog forward in terms of healthcare and, and things, which is, is just drastically needed. Well, I have a fourth one for the price of one. There we go. Um, so the university college education, that whole bubble is going to pop. And when that happens, it is going to, it's going to take control of science away from the universities. Hmm. Um, we are, we are in the midst of a major credibility and integrity crisis with our large institutions. All of the large institutions are impossibly corrupt. Okay, so, so public education, the National Educational Association, the teachers unions, and all of that, okay, incredibly corrupt, okay. Um, science is ridiculously bureaucratic, more bureaucratic than most of y'all know. Okay. And I'm deep in the trenches with people mm -hmm. in the profession. I, I know about this. Um, you know, and then you, you look at all kinds of other, other things like the banking system. Okay. The banking system is corrupt and, and, and bureaucratized. And we all know that the government is corrupt and, and bureaucratized. Okay. So what happens when Occupy Sally Mae happens? Well, all of a sudden, overnight, a whole bunch of institutions lose a lot of credibility and a lot of money and a lot of people. And you're going to have these people spilling out 
And you're going to see an uberization of not only food, but even things like science. Like the science has still got to get done. Okay. But what happens if science research starts getting done on Upwork? Instead of getting done through the traditional grant system. Right. Well, I think it's very, very likely that this sort of thing is going to be happening. And so, um, so like I, I, when you have a disruption or a dislocation, you do not know how many other dominoes are going to come down as a result of that. Um, but all, like all of these things that I've talked about right here are, they are just bursting at the seams. I mean, they're, it's, it's only going to take like a, a tick and like, and then all of a sudden, because the pent up demand and the bleeding necks behind the scenes are unbelievable. All right. Well, that takes us to the end of number three. Just two more to go. We'll see you tomorrow.